Okay, I'm back with part two. Hopefully part one did get filmed because we had this problem the other day. And it stopped on me, so. <laughs> uh, Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So that's the commission that Jesus gave us. That's what we're supposed to be up to. Um, Luke 22, um, 19, and when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which it is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Um, and I usually play, pray uh, before my meals, um, Lord, uh, let my whatever meal it is be as the bread of life and the living water that Jesus gave me through his sacrifice. Let it heal and nourish my body and cause me no harm. Um, and there are other prayers, you know, my grandmother said other prayers they pray. <laughs> so, you know, whatever works for you. And if you don't do that and a blessing over your meal, then if you specifically do, you know, the um, sacrament, then, you know, that's, that's a thing too. Um, Acts 1, 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest parts of the earth. Um, and now, I, I was doing Reiki, and a woman asked me, she said, Where does that heat come from, uh, from your hands, you think? And I said, The Holy Spirit, because I don't ask the universe, you know, because I'm a Christian. I ask the Holy Spirit to come and, you know, do this healing. So that's where I feel the warmth from my hands comes but she said i've been to other reiki practitioners so i've never felt an actual warmth coming from someone's hands before so you know hopefully hopefully i did some good <laughs> you know glory god acts 2 18 peter said to them repent and each of you will be baptized in the name of jesus christ for the forgiveness of your sins and that's what you got to do you know you got to repent first and then get baptized for forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off. So, you know, you're supposed to be trying to get your kids into this too. As many as the Lord our God will call to himself. And remember, the Lord calls us. And with many other words, he solemnly testified and kept on exhorting them, saying... Be saved from this perverse generation. And the world today, perversion is, you know, commonplace. So then, those who had received his word were baptized. And that day, there were added about 3,000 souls. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Amen. <laughs> Acts 3... Um, no, wait, let's see, Acts 2.17, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord was adding to their number, day by day, those who were being saved. Acts 5.1, but a man named Ananias, with his wife, Sapphira, sold a piece of property and kept back some of the price for himself with his wife's full knowledge, and bringing a portion of it, he laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back some of the price of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not under your control? Why is it that you have conceived this deed, your heart, in your heart you have not lied to men but to God and as he heard these words Ananias fell down and breathed his last and great fear came over all who heard of it the young men got up and covered him up and after carrying him out they buried him now there elapsed an interval of about three hours and his wife came in not knowing what had happened and Peter responded to her Tell me whether you sold the land for such and such a price. Excuse me. And she said, Yes, 
That was the price. Then Peter said to her, Why is it that you have agreed together to put the Spirit of the Lord to the test? Behold, the ten feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out as well. And immediately she fell at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her dead. And they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. The great fear came over the whole church and over all who heard these things. And again, it's stupid. Why lie? Why lie about it? You know? You don't have to give it all. You can give whatever you want to give. But why say, oh, we only sold it for... I don't even know. People, people are like that, though. I've met people like that. Acts 15, 19. Therefore it is my judgment that we do not trouble those who are turning to God from among the Gentiles, but that we write to them that they abstain from things contaminated by idols and from fornication and from what is strangled and from blood. For Moses from ancient generations has in every city those who preach him, since he is read in the synagogues every Sabbath. Then it seemed good to the apostles and the elders with the whole church to choose men from among them to send to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, Judas called Barsabbas, and Silas led leading men among the brethren. And they sent this letter to them. The apostles and the brethren who are elders to the brethren in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia who are from the Gentiles. Greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number uh, to whom we gave no instruction have disturbed you with their words, unsettling your souls, it seemed good to us, having become of one mind, to select men to send to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore we have sent Judas and Silas, who themselves will also report the same things by word of mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these essentials, that you abstain from things sacrificed to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication. If you keep yourselves free from such things, you will do well. Farewell. And, you know, back in the day, they were wanting them to get circumcised, some of the folks were and everything. And, you know, I feel like it's a little racist for them to even say, to the Gentiles, you know. <laughs> That's still setting them apart. So when they were sent away, they went down to Antioch. And having gathered to the congregation together, they delivered the letter. When they had read it, they rejoiced because of its encouragement. And people are going to rejoice when you encourage them versus when you're discouraging them all the time. So, as I say, you draw more flies with honey than you do vinegar. Acts 26. 28. Be on guard for yourselves and for all the flock. That's what she's supposed to be doing because we know who's, who's wandering looking to get you. Among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. So, you know, if you're any type of minister, that's your job. You need to be looking out. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 5, 1, it is actually reported that there is immorality among you, an immorality of such a kind as does not exist even among the Gentiles. So that's definitely not good. That someone has his father's wife. Definitely that's not good. You have become arrogant and have not mourned instead so that the one who had done this deed would be removed from your midst. So evidently dad popped off and son couldn't wait to get, you know, stepmom. For I, on my part, though absent in body but present in spirit, have already judged him who has so committed this, as though I were present. In the name of our Lord Jesus, when you are assembled, and I with you in spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus, I have decided to deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of his flesh so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. And maybe it was his biological mom, you know, that's pretty severe, so maybe it was his biological mom. I mean, women weren't talked about, you know, in a very descriptive way. You know, his father's wife could have been stepmom, could have been real mom, and he's so upset by it, maybe it was real mom. Your boasting is not good. 
Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump of dough? Clean out the old leaven so that you may have a new lump, just as you are, in fact, unleavened. For Christ, our Passover, also has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, because, you know, there's folks running that game, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. And that's hard for some folks. I wrote you in my letter not to associate with immoral people, and we're not supposed to. I did not at all mean with the immoral people of this world, or with the covetous and swindlers, or with idolaters, and there's plenty of those in the world too, excuse me, for then you would have to go out into the world. But actually, I wrote to you not to associate with any so-called brother or sister if he is an immoral person, or covetous, or an idolater, or a reviler, or a drunkard, or a swindler, not even judging outsiders. Do you not judge those who are within the church, but those who are outside? God judges, remove the wicked man from among yourselves, and women too. Ephesians 3, 21. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. And that's to God be the glory. Ephesians uh, 4, 13. Until we all attain the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. As a result, we are no longer to be children, tossed here and there by waves and carried about every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, and there's some of them out there looking to do that to you, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ, from the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. Because, you know, that's how we're supposed to build up the church, which are Christians, is in love. Second Thessalonians uh, 3, 6. Now we command you, brethren and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from every brother or sister who leads an unruly life and not according to the tradition which you received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example, because we did not act in an undisciplined manner among you, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with labor and hardship we kept working night and day that we would not be a burden to any of you. But because we do not have the right to this, but in order to other to offer ourselves a model for you, so that you would follow an example. For even when we were with you, we used to give you this order. If anyone is not willing to work, then he is not to eat either. For we hear that some among you are leading an undisciplined life, doing no work at all, but acting like busybodies. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to work in quiet fashion. <coughs> uh oh. These pages, though. And eat their own bread. But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary of doing good. And, you know, there's people like that nowadays who don't want to work. You know? They're bumming on the streets, pretending they are homeless or whatever. Uh, you know, um, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to do this, you know, here, trying to make some money. Because I feel like I should be contributing something to the household. But, you know. If anyone does not obey our instruction in this letter, take special note of that person. And do not associate with them, so that they will be put to shame. Yet, do not regard him as an enemy... But admonish him as a brother. Um, so that might be easier said than done. Uh, 1 Timothy 19. Keeping faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected and suffered shipwreck in regard to their faith. And some people do. They fall away. Among these are 
Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan, so that they will be taught not to blaspheme. Um, and again, you know, uh, I think that's a slippery slope there, handing folks over to Satan. <laughs> Second Timothy 2.2 two, The things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, and trust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Um, so, you know, um, that's why I wanted the charity to keep going. You know, I wanted to be a legacy and to help people and keep doing it, but it didn't work out that way. But maybe, you know, somebody will come after me and say, hey, we need to do these things. Um, 15. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed. Accurately handling the word of truth. And that's what I'm trying to do when I'm in here talking. <laughs> <coughs> I ain't just talking to hear myself talk. 2 Timothy 16, uh, 2, 16, excuse me, 3, 16. Oh my gosh. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching. So even if, um, you know, like I said, there's some problems with the Bible. Um... We, in the church, say it's inspired by God. And it's profitable for teaching. Um, most things, I'm going to say, I'll agree with that. But, again, there anything that's racist, sexist, goes specifically against what Jesus said? No. <laughs> for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Because that's what you're supposed to be up to. Um, Titus 1, 5. For this reason I left you in Crete, that you would set in order what remains and appoint elders in every city as I directed you. 10. For there are many rebellious men, empty talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, who must be silenced because they are upsetting whole families, teaching things they should not teach for the sake of sordid gain. One of themselves, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. This testimony is true. For this reason, reprove them severely so that they may be sound in the faith, not paying attention to Jewish myths and commandments of men who turn away from the truth. To the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, Nothing is pure, but both their mind and their conscience are defiled. They profess to know God, but by their deeds they deny Him, being detestable and disobedient and worthless for any good deed. 1 Peter 5, 1 Therefore, I exhort the elders among you, as your fellow elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ, and a partaker also of the glory that is to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but voluntarily, according to the will of God, and not for sordid gain, but with eagerness, nor yet as lording it over those allotted to your charge, but proving to be examples of the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. You younger men and women, likewise, be subject to your elders. And all of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. For God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. 1 John 1, 3 What we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father, and with the Son, Jesus Christ. And that is part three of the overview of theology on the church. Amen. Um, please like and share this word so we can spread it around the world. Uh, if you want to help me out, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want to help me out even more, go to my Patreon page and become a patron. Thanks for watching. That's all for now. Until next time.